Assalamu alaikum dear viewers, welcome back to Utah. We are going straight back to Ruben. Ruben, we were talking about our youth yeah. and um, we are talking about the problems and what, what are the problems we are talking about. Now we are going to go back to uh, solution. Yeah. Um, can we blame our youth for all those problems they are facing? Can we blame them or who is responsible for all those things? Um, I don't think we can blame the youth. I mean society was here before the youth was here. So they are just um, a result of what they are experiencing. So I don't think that like, we can blame them, but I think a lot more has to be done to put things in place to kind of help their growth and help to nurture them um, into adulthood. Because there's a lot of things like, for example, um, when I was in school, I didn't learn anything about doing taxes. And now as a freelancer, I have to kind of try and rush through the information to learn that. Um, and there's, there's a lot more things like that. And I feel like, yeah, as young people, we're not really championed for kind of the, the contributions that we bring to society. For example, um, everybody knows about being in a classroom and the kind of the class clown or that person that their personality is so big that they kind of dominate the classroom. Um, but that's um, energy that can be used if kind of directed and given the right guidance. Do you understand? So there's, there's a lot of things that I think need more of an in-depth conversation when we're talking about young people and kind of what they have to offer. But do you think we, as, as a nation, do you think mm. our young people have good skills for good job? Do you think we have enough skills? Do you think, or do you think it's lacking the skills? Um, I think we have skills that maybe we lack experience. Um, okay. When you come out of school, come out of college, and you go and look for a job, they say no because you haven't got the experience and so it's hard to get the experience without actually having a job um, is to catch 22. So I think we lack experience but in terms of skill set we have a wide range of skill sets. For example, um, you might take on, I was born and raised on a council estate and on, that, on those estates you see hundreds of young people kind of rapping with each other, doing ciphers, doing spoken word poetry, kind of writing down their thoughts. And these are skills that can be kind of captured and used. For example, just um, looking at words and how we use them. If young people were given the right access to certain words, and for example, slang culture. If slang culture was championed a bit more, um, young people feel like they had more of a voice. And so that will lead to them being able to express themselves more and therefore breaking down the barriers between young people and the older, older generations, the corporate world, things like that. So I think um, we, as a whole, bring our own culture to society. Um, and if it's more, if, if it's given more respect, I think, if it's given more mm -hmm. respect mm -hmm. and not seen as a subculture, or something that we should yeah. share with. I think it needs to come from both sides, definitely. Especially mm. employment. Sorry, I was going to build on Go what on you said. It's, you're, you're taught to, or you're not taught, that's, that's one of the main problems, but when you are given counsel or guidance on how to approach a job interview, you said, oh, make sure you pronounce your T's properly, make mm. sure you don't say in it, make sure, and that, you've got you've to come to terms with the fact that language changes all the mm. time, yeah. and it's gone towards a place that mm. we'll, we'll probably never get it back from. Um, and that's a good thing, you should embrace that. So many people, young people, mm. speak a certain way nowadays. There is, you will not gain much from trying to force them out of that. What you should do is embrace it instead. Yeah. I mean, there was a time that Shakespeare was told that he shouldn't speak of a certain way because it was too revolutionary, <laughs> it was too new, and look how we judge yeah. him. So uh, I don't think that there's... I think there's a lot that can be done. And to build off of that, um, we're not saying that young people should go into interviews saying, in it, or you get me, can I have yeah. this job yeah. fam kind of thing. <laughs> but I think that um, society needs to recognise that slang is another language literally mm -hmm. and um, it's a part of our culture and so if it's not kind of attacked with a negative light I feel like there's we nothing will wrong be, with it there's nothing wrong yeah, with I it think we we need, I think my, my age group need to be educated in that line yeah you can't brush away someone's used to speaking something doesn't no. mean that man is a bad person mm. it's not that you just like you got used to it and just saying it especially yeah. because sorry I know this point's probably but it's, it's changed in such a way that, as I said, you're not going to get it back. Yeah. Language mm -hmm. does change. It's for, it is forever changing. And there's no, just because there's a dictionary published each year, there's no way you can just say, right, this is how we should mm -hmm. speak. Because in 20 years' time, no one will know. 
So unless you embrace it, you're just gonna the the amount of people you're the amount of young people you're gonna be able to employ as an employer or as a parent um, is just gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller. I've got a good question for you, sir. Cool. Really, Far um, away. There are thousands of people applying for jobs, mm -hmm. and they're not getting jobs. They're trying. They're going to their agents. They're doing everything they can. <coughs> Why do you think it's the case? What, what's wrong? What's, what do you think is missing? I don't think they're applying for two things. One, I don't think they're applying for the right jobs for them. Okay. Um, and secondly, I don't think they are applying in the right way. So I'll tackle the first one first, and this is probably the most important piece of advice I give to anyone job seeking: is you've got to you've got to decide whether you're looking for a job or for a career, because they they mean very different things. Um, it's so much so that it's it's ridiculous. You will fight for a career if it's something you mm. want to do and something you're passionate about. No one will be able to stop you doing it. But as as many parents know, it is hard to try and get someone young. My parents will vouch for this as well to get a job. I mean. And you, you might find that as well. I mean, your son sounds like one in a million. <laughs> he sounds like he's proactive about finding things out. But I wasn't at that age. And when my mum suggested for me going to get a Saturday job uh, at a shop, I couldn't think of anything worse because Saturdays was the day I spent with my friends. But when it, when it turned out that me and one of my friends had a common interest and we wanted to start a business together at 18, you could not get me away from planning that business. I was there every day wow. planning how we were going to do this. And I think that is the case with most people. Um, so that's the first issue, is finding out why you want to do something. And there's a couple of things, a couple of questions I'd say you should ask yourself. So if you are listening and you're, and you're young, I don't know what camera to look at here, but... This one here, please. <coughs> no, I was only <laughs> joking, but you should look at what you are better or what you know more about than most people. Right. And don't be ashamed of that. So if you know a lot about grime music, there are many businesses mm. that have come up across it, Link Up TV, GRM Daily. So it doesn't, it doesn't have to be something... You know, it doesn't have to be maths or accounting or, or you know, law. It doesn't have to be anything with such a statue. Just look what you know more about than most people. And the second thing is, is that um, a great career should be a combination of four things. And there's a great little diagram, if anyone wants to Google it. It should be a combination of what, uh, what you love, what the world needs, what will pay you well, and what you're great at. So if what you know more about is in the center of those four things, you're a winner. You've do, you have done well. So that's the first piece of advice I give. If when you're searching, make sure you're looking for a career and, and not a job. Um, and the second thing is, is that once you've found what you want to do, once you've ticked those boxes and you've thought, actually, I could see myself doing this for, for a long time, it's how you apply that becomes very important. Um, we touched on it just briefly before the break. It's all about quality over quantity. So I don't know how many hours, uh, probably if you spend an hour a day, if, re, if your son does spend an hour a day applying for a job, um, he has the capacity at his fingertips to be able to go on to Reed or, or, Mon or Monster Jobs or whatever it's called and apply for literally 800 jobs in an hour. He can click two buttons, apply, attach cover letter and he has applied for a job. And it will be a very similar cover letter to the ones he sent every other job and that's not the way to do it as mm -hmm. Ruben mentioned. And also as a consequence of that, it will massively demotivate you when you get rejected from all these jobs that you don't actually want. I mean, that's the truth of it. You probably yeah. don't want most of these jobs. So what you should mm -hmm. do is if you're spending an hour a day is pick three to five that you actually care about. So find that passion, find that something that you're better at or know more about than most people and look for jobs in those areas. Identify somewhere that you'd like to work and, ge and send them a genuine email explaining that you think you'd be great for the team. Now, Can I ask Robin something here? Yeah, sorry. Robin, what do you think as a parents we should do? What role should mm. we play to help our young kids? What do you think we should do? I think as parents you need to talk to your young people more. Like when I say talk, I don't mean just have a conversation with them. I mean actually listen um, to to what's going on in their everyday life. Engage more with them. Kind of um, listen to their music sometimes. You know, um, talk about what's going on in their social life. And I feel that that will help build more of a rapport with the older generation and the younger generation, parents and their children. And in building a rapport, it builds up the trust. So young people are more likely to say what's going on out on the streets to their, to their um, parents. Um, they're more likely to share those fine details or secrets and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so I think, yeah, just not, don't be afraid. But also it could help them to sh uh, f uh, search for them. Mm. Search for the jobs. Parents, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, the People we know, the connection we have, we should also play a role in their life. So look, you look for it, I look for it too. 
Absolutely, but also, like um, sorry to cut you, um, yeah, also I feel like parents should champion the arts much more within the young people. Like, you've got um, young people that love grand music, young people that love drawing, um, you can go on with many examples. And because it's not seen as a realistic career, young people are kind of encouraged to sway away from that, go and get a nine to five, mm. kind of go and apply for a normal job. Which can I add, a normal job, it n doesn't mean what it used to in, mm. in my parents' generation anymore. Like, as we spoke off camera, there are, there are millionaire kids younger than me that, play, yeah. that make a living mm. playing games on YouTube. Like, and that is legitimately mm. how they have made their millions. So a normal job can mean anything. And I think Ruben is 100% mm. right when it, championing the arts and embrace it more. Realise that you can, the times have changed. The, the age of the nine to five will probably die out pretty soon. You can work from home now, you can do whatever you want to do and embrace that. Uh, welcome your kids' passions. Mm -hmm. Don't tell them, oh, don't be silly, you're not gonna be a, a rapper, you're not gonna be a footballer. Mm -hmm. Don't tell them that. Embrace yeah. it and embrace it and help them with it. Because you're right, maybe they, will, maybe they won't achieve top tier football or top tier rap, but there is so many other ways to make money around those industries that, that it can be their career. Mm -hmm. Is there any specific trainings for people to do, especially like uh, interviews or doing CV? You know, like you said, people just doing it by fingertips. It's not working. No, it's true. Lots of, so what do you think they should do? What step do, should they take to do? Go for trainings? Is there any courses? Or is there any other tips from yourself? Like there's, I, think there's, I think that hopefully, you know, in a dream world, and hopefully we'll get there soon, five, ten years' time, there'll be a whole um, a whole subject in schools dedicated to what will happen after life, uh, what happens after your school life. Mm -hmm. um, but until we have that time, yeah, it's about being proactive. Definitely it's about being proactive. I mean, the training courses that I know of, I don't know any well enough to be able to say, look, you should definitely do this one. Um, but there are definitely companies out there like mine. I mean, we run great workshops that teach kids how to be more proactive about searching for jobs. Um, but what they should do is they should make use of the technology at their fingertips. Can you break it down? What do you teach them? What do, how do you train them? Yeah, of course. So you mean yeah. in terms of actually going out and getting a job? Yeah. Um, that's what well, we sort of covered it loosely in what I was saying before. But you okay. got to identify why you want to get a certain career, and then when you okay, so when you actually go out to get one, that's sort of the main thing. Yeah. Um, try and be face to face. And there's a study that was done around this, um, and I'll sort of break it down for you loosely. Is that as we're speaking right now? the impression that you're getting from me is 55% my body language, so the way I move, the way I conduct myself, that's what you're reading from me. 38% uh, is from my tone of voice, the way I'm moving my vocal cords, whether I'm slowing up, speaking louder, speaking slower. Um, and only 7% of what you're hearing right now is actually my words. Seven, that is such a tiny fraction, 7%. So that means that when you're searching for a job or when you're applying for a job, if you just type out an online form or if you just give away your CV, an employer is only hearing 7% of what you have to say. Whereas if you get on the phone, you get that 7% plus the 38%. So you get a total of 45%. You might be able to convince someone over the phone. If they were going to say no, you might be able to convince them. But if you get face to face, that's the whole 100%. You know what, that's, that's really amazing tips you've given. A lot of young people, or a lot of, even myself, actually, not young people, I keep saying young people. Um, we think it's easy way, just go on the computer, da -da 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 -da, and that's it. I've done my job. If it works, mm. it works. It doesn't work, it doesn't work. I'll apply yeah. for so many of them. Mm -hmm. Actually, you don't, you're not even serious about it. And like you said, 7%. Mm. Only. It's, 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 it's astonishing. Really. And when you see someone, it's the confidence that you see someone. You, you know, you, first time you probably didn't have it. Don't worry about it. You pick it up, go to the next mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. you learn it. You go to the next one, you learn it. And then you come out with some listen. It's not going to work. I'm, I've got to find something new. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But on the computer, you will not get that. Mm -hmm. I mean... And you don't get feedback most times. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because there's exactly. so many people mm -hmm. applying for these jobs. Um, you don't get feedback, so it just feels totally, it feels very unrewarding. It's a horrible experience applying for jobs online, which is probably why, it, so, as you said, well, I don't know, as you said, that you kids give up. They yeah. just think, oh, well, I've done my part, I will, I will try it, and it has failed. It's not, I mean, it's not the case. Searching for jobs can be fun and rewarding. And it's not just, again, sorry, not jobs, careers. Of course. Give them a phone mm -hmm. call, go see them face to face, speak to your parents, speak to your parents' friends. Um, just, just Fantastic. Robin, you do a lot of workshops with young people. Yeah. Um, they are very talented, I'm assuming, mm -hmm. definitely. Because 
people who come for a workshop, they want to see something. They want to see a change. So if they take that first step, that means that person wants to change. Mm -hmm. So you, you're working with them. What do you see in them? What do you, kind of dreams they have? Um, I see a lot of potential. I see, um, I see a lot of their environment. So when I'm in these workshops, most of these young people are talking about um, kind of the violence that they're experiencing outside, the, the crimes, um, some that they're partaking in and some that they just see with their friends and whatnot. Um, mm -hmm. And I kind of, I embrace the fact that they say things like that and they um, kind of express themselves in that way, knowing that they can do because they've built up a trust with me and a trust in the exercises that we're doing. And I feel like... Um, do you get any Asian kids in your class? I mean, in your workshop? Asian yeah, members? absolutely. All ethnicities, yeah. That's good. Mm. And um, I feel like, yeah, a lot of these children, they're kind of they're on outside of school and they're getting involved with all of this dark negativity and then they come into the school system and um, it's almost like they're rejected. It doesn't address it. It doesn't oh. address it, literally. And um, if they go and apply for a job, it's like they're getting rejections from all angles. And I feel like um, I know that we as a society, as parents, as just kind of the older generation looking down um, on us, I feel like they they need to um, put more structures in place. They need to don't be afraid to talk to young people. Don't be afraid why to do share you think, that advice. Uh, why do you think we're struggling to know our young people or mm. our own kids? Forget about anybody outside. Mm -hmm. Knowing our own kids, why do you think we're struggling? Why do you think we always think something you know not right? Why um, do we think like that? Honestly, I think there needs to be more family time. There needs to be more kind of put the phones away, turn the TV off, let's sit down around the dinner table, have a old conversation, school old, school, <laughs> old school style, yeah. have a meal and let's just communicate. Um, because especially in households that I've talked to, as soon as dinner's done, everybody goes in their room and they're kind of just segregated. So I feel like just basic things like that, just having that conversation with your family and just engaging in them, sharing experience, experiences with them, sorry, um, and not being afraid to kind of embrace what you're learning from them. Um, yeah, I it feel like that's just important. It is hard for parents, let's not... I mean, it's hard for young people as well, but yeah. because, and that's, I think that's where the gap is, is that because times change so quickly, yeah. um, even for the younger, even for parents having kids at a really young age, by the time that their kids are, have grown to a level of mm -hmm. maybe 15, 16 years old, there's a, there's a minimum, minimum sort of 15, 16 year age gap mm -hmm. Um, so experiences yeah. will be wildly different. So will most interactions on a daily basis. So find some things in common. Uh, if we're you, talking on a sort of spiritual level. My, when you mentioned old school, I think you know, there's something in it, honestly. Yeah. All day we'll see the, the, the bonding within the family is mm. really strong. Mm. They, and they, they will say, when we were young, we used to say morning to everyone we see in, the, in that age group, anyone and everyone. Mm. Nowadays, we don't get to see that. Mm. Nobody talks to nobody almost. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why do you think is the case? Because that's one of the really uh, weak point mm -hmm. in our society now. You know, people, was, especially in UK, they say if, if someone does anything, no one talks about it. Mm -hmm. They just walk off, don't care. If someone, you know, you could say don't do that or something. People don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's risky in yeah, some cases, I'm sure, but mm -hmm. we're becoming a silent mm -hmm. uh, a nation. You know, it doesn't help. That's, so it, that's probably down to technology somewhat. Okay. At least, at least somewhat, probably more so. Because um, face to face, I mean, face to face communication now means staring at a screen. <laughs> Does yeah. it not? Does yeah, it not? Yeah, am, I, yeah. am I wrong? No, it no, means no, it means looking at a screen and mm. chatting to your friend who's can only you know not that far away over mm. the phone. And sometimes, sometimes technology is bad. Sometimes it's good. But in this specific case you're mm. talking about, I don't think it's great. I, I think, think it has disconnected mm. parents from their kids. And to bring that closer together, you do need to find common interests. You mm. need to find ways that you can engage without it being forced, mm. you know, without it being awkward, for want of a better word. Um, and have trust, as Ruben said. I know it's hard, but have trust that your kids are going in a good place, which they probably are. Um, I think that's the only positive we can do. I mm. mean, we help our kids. Being negative doesn't help. You're no. just pulling somebody at the back. No, yeah. and You can't stop him. He's going to do what he wants to do. Yeah. Even you being negative, whatever you've been nagging all day, it's not going to help you. Mm. You're just going to lose your kids. And I think, sorry, not to cut you off, I think yeah, yeah, um, I would say to parents, continue to share those pearls of wisdom. 
even if it seems like your children aren't listening. They are. Because when they get into that, that moment, that intense moment where they kind of, it's, it's a life or death situation or anything associated, they're going to reflect back to that voice in that head when their mother was saying, don't mm -hmm. do that, or their dad was saying, stay away from that. Do you understand? So I think don't be afraid um, to kind of address your young people with things that they're going to face outside because there's nothing that you can say that's going to be worse than what they're going to be facing in the, the normal world. I had, a f I had a, this is sort of a small story. I've got a friend and he said that his dad growing up was the funniest man in the world. And he always used to make everyone laugh. And he enjoyed it. He really did enjoy it. But you know what teenagers are like? I was one. We all were one. <laughs> we love to play the role of Moody. And one day he came home after a day of school and his dad was there. And his dad cracked a joke. And he said, oh, whatever, dad, you're just not funny. And he said from then on, he just stopped making an effort. And I think he'd actually, he'd insult his dad. He upset him. And he misses it so much now. Mm. Um, so have a, have a thick skin as well. Teenagers say things they don't mean. And going back to your point, they may act uninterested, but the best pearls of wisdom, the, that's a great saying as well, the best pearls of wisdom I've ever got were from my parents in my teenage years when I pretended not to care. Yeah. Do you know? So mm -hmm. if you are a parent, you know, have perseverance. Mm. You know, push Why through. do we, I, I know, same thing in my home as well, you know, like um, I was doing, I used to train people to become a good parents, parenting courses. Yeah. First time when I learned it for myself, actually, I really, I was amazed to know, actually, I was making a lot of mistakes myself. So they said to me, listen, I know you're a nice guy and fine. It was like a friendship with my kids. You know, it's fine, mm -hmm. cool, let's do it, man. Let's go out, blah, blah, blah. But they said, that's not parenting. You're doing, what you're doing here is there's no no, there's no discipline. Mm -hmm. you, you don't have discipline, they don't have discipline. And stuff like that, they were telling me. I said, it makes sense. You know, it really made sense to me. So one day they said to me, you go home, your homework is go home, take them out, and let them be the boss for today. And you just say, be like one of them. And I said, I'll do that. And I've done that. Honestly, it was, it was, was it good? not good, man. <laughs> they keep telling me what to do. And I keep saying, yeah, do I have to? Yeah, yeah. And then I realized, another thing they said to me, uh, why do you think when you go home, you get angry with your kids? Why? First find out what are the words they use and then it clicks you. And one of the words, it took me time, actually. I was looking for the word. Why? When did I get last time angry? And I said, every time the kids, you say, I don't care in your face. They don't mean when they say it like mm. that. No. They, they mean, what they mean is I don't know. Maybe I'm assuming, yeah. I don't yeah. know, but yeah. they say I don't care. Mm. When they say that to your face, especially your kids, mm. you, say, what do you, you don't care about me or you don't care about your life? Mm. You know, there a lot of things comes into my head, but to him actually saying, I don't know. I yeah. can't do it. Yeah, of course. That's brilliant. Mm. Yeah. See, see, then I walked it out. So every time they say I don't care, I stop and try to flick it out, actually he's saying, I don't know, I don't know how to do it, man. Mm. That's it. <laughs> and, and you <laughs> got to have thick me. skin as a parent, you can't do it. Yeah. And, and, and from then on, actually, I, I learned on it, so good, that's good, that, that's the way we're going forward. I think if we try, we learn it. Mm. Miles, can I come to you, say somebody new, I'm talking about the parents now, mm -hmm. what does he look for in his kids, or how can he help his kids to find a job? What does he need to look into it? Oh, you see, if the parent as himself the parent, is going parent, out, okay, so, so um, the parent should, if they're, if they trust they, so if they, in your situation, I mean, you trust your yeah. kid to be a hard worker, very proactive, um, you imagine should go I, out and imagine rely. Imagine I don't trust, imagine. Oh, like well, that's, that. okay, so, so this, this is the two different situations. I need to bring in because them together. As a parent, you worry that if you go out and you search your network and you find and you speak to your friend and he, imagine, he offers your kid a job, you worry that you're, you're, you're the, you're the, you're the, your child is then representing your name mm. and might not fulfill. Do you, it's, yeah, it is yeah, a genuine yeah. worry. So you've got to make sure that, first off, I suppose I think trust is the main thing. I think if you don't trust your child, you shouldn't put yourself out there to get them a job because if the, if the kid, if the child doesn't want it, um, I'll speak for myself. If my dad got tried to get me a Saturday shop and forced me into it when I was mm. a child, I would have let him down. I mean, it never happened, but I would have let him down because I wouldn't have wanted to go, so therefore I wouldn't have turned up. And if I did turn up, I wouldn't want it to be there. And if it was, especially if it was with his friend's shop, his friend would then feel like my dad let him down by offering me, um, and I then let my dad down. So what you should do, going back to this issue that we've brought up a few times, mm. is one, learn to trust them, mm -hmm. and two, identify their passion. I mean, so if you can find a passion in your child that you know that they will work hard for, say football, um, and you happen to know somebody, or you don't have to know somebody, and you want to do that extra bit of research, find a nice football coach. Find, find a football event that goes on 
on the weekend and then suggest that to your kids. Suggest something that's in their line that they want to do and they will definitely be more responsive. Do you think we, um, some parents, and not all of them, some mm -hmm. parents are pushing their kids into do something they want them to do, not the kids. It's their choice, you do that, cool, you've got to do it. Yeah. Do you think yeah, we do yeah, that? Yeah, I think it's, it's natural to kind of have your children follow in your footsteps. I feel like that's natural to, to want them to do that. Um, but I also think that young people, they're growing all the time. Their, their mind's always developing, their brain's always developing, and they're always um, shaping and reshaping their own character. And so even with my mom, um, when I was younger, I was more into filmmaking and she would go out and find opportunities for me, um, which I would follow up, which, as you were saying, increases the trust. What kind of stuff were you doing? What kind of, what kind of movies you were making? Oh. Um, yeah, so I used to be into script writing, um, which is kind of what helped me move into spoken word. Um, but yeah, the script writing, um, directing, producing, things like that. Um, and. I, was, I felt like I was in limbo because, as you know, the film world is really difficult to get into if you don't have any links or networks. And my mom taking it upon herself to kind of go down the road and see what courses are on, what workshops, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, That's cool, man. Yeah, yeah. It shows the support. Honestly, shows the support. It builds the yeah. trust. I mean and more importantly, it, it made me feel like I could come to her and say, I'm doing this now. And she would support me in that mm. and kind of go through her networks with that as well. Um, so, yeah, definitely just like um, exercising your networks is uh, important. You know, I, I noticed two things actually. Mm -hmm. um, I hope I'm not wrong. You are very close with your family and also you as well. Mm -hmm. with the way you were spoken about them, with a lot of respect that like you were using your mother and father, and you, say, you just use that now actually. Mm -hmm. It shows if you have a bonding in your home, within your home, if you have a good environment, then. It helps you, you know, gives yeah. you a free space to think, mm -hmm. love. Is that why you choose your company called Live Love Talent? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, Brilliant plug there. Yeah. Well. <laughs> that was a wicked, that was a wicked plug. That in yeah. Um, no, yeah, Live and Love Talent is literally um, going on the premise that people are living with their talent. Like, this is, this is me for the rest of my life. And so if I'm not going to use it now, when am I going to use it? Kind of thing, like, time's like the essence. And love is literally for people that love seeing others shine, love putting others on a platform, like what our parents do, like what my mum done with me, um, kind of getting me involved with certain different workshops and things like that. Um, so yeah, just like living and loving yourself, living and loving your talents, living and loving what you bring to the world. And when you're gone, what's going to keep your legacy going? What's going to help you to make a mark, a permanent mm. mark, with a permanent marker on this earth? Fantastic. Mark, did I tell you he's got a point for us? After the break, he's going to tell us a point. Okay, wicked. Okay, wicked, that, wicked. That yeah, cool. yeah, definitely. Um, you know, um, this is something missing. Mm -hmm. What I find it missing is I, could, I can't do it myself, so I put my hands up. Our kids talking about a good thing about our, you know, elders or the parents or the uncles. or you know, We don't do that anymore. Young people don't do that. Maybe it's not easy for them. They are... Mm. The time we are now is most about this and that. Yeah. There's no communication or connection with them. Mm. It's more about Facebook, hi mom, or stuff <laughs> like that. It's not that anymore. It's not in the round table anymore, is it? This is something missing yeah. from the, some places. And um, if we can get that back on again, the old start somewhere, mm. I think it would help. I think it's communication is very, very important. It's, it's funny you say that. I mean, that's what the whole, that's what my whole social enterprise is about. Oh. It is, I it's mean, like oh, look, there, yeah, 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 they're <laughs> wicked. So, um, I, I always say this thing, so the uh, Homo erectus were well, the species. Well, I'm going to come back to you yeah? after the break. Okay, no worries, great. Do your viewers, um, you know, I'm just interested in talking to you. Do your viewers, we're just going to go for a small break again. Stay with us, you're going to enjoy it. We've got a poem for you. Mm -hmm.